Unit 9, Day 3, Inscribed Angles. An inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and the sides contain chords of the circle. So here we have this angle and you can see that the vertex is on the circle, not at the center. So last time we talked about central angles that have vertex at the center, but this is an inscribed angle with the vertex on the circle. Then, just like we talked about last time, the edge of the circle that the sides of the angle cut off, this is called the intercepted arc. That's the arc that lies in the interior of the inscribed angle and has endpoints on the angle. The inscribed angles theorem says that if an angle is inscribed in a circle, then its measure is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So last time we talked about how the central angle is the same measure as that intercepted arc. So if we use those same endpoints A and B and we draw an inscribed angle, this angle measurement is going to be half of that arc. So since this is 80, the inscribed angle will be 40. This is a corollary which goes along with the theorem we just talked about. It says if two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So here you have this inscribed angle, the blue one, has endpoints at B and at A. The green angle is also inscribed and has endpoints at B and A. Since both of them have the same intercepted arc, which is 80 degrees, both of them are going to be half of 80, which is 40 degrees. So even if you don't know the measure of this intercepted arc, you would know that these two angles are going to be congruent to each other. Here's another corollary, and this one says that a right triangle can be inscribed in a circle if and only if the hypotenuse is the diameter of the circle. So again, we talked about how an inscribed angle measure, this angle right here, is going to be half of the intercepted arc. Well, last time we talked about how a circle is 360 degrees, so half of the circle is going to be 180. So if this intercepted arc is 180, half of 180 is going to be 90 degrees. Likewise, the endpoints C and A, if you connect those, that creates a diameter of the circle. Now let's work through a few examples. This one asks us to find the measure of the indicated arc or angle. So we're looking for the measure of arc BC. So that means we're looking for this arc measure right here. So here we have this inscribed angle, BAC, and we said that the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So if 38 is going to be half of BC, then we need to take 38 and multiply it by 2 so that we can get the measure of arc BC, and that's going to give us 76 degrees. Now in this example, we're looking for the measure of angle BAC. So we're actually looking for the measure of this angle right here. Okay. And in order to find that, we're given the measure of the arc BC, that intercepted arc. So again, the angle is half of the intercepted arc. So since we're given the intercepted arc, for this one, we need to divide it by 2 so that we can have an angle measure of 16 degrees. So go ahead and pause. I want you to try these two examples and then check back with me to see if you got it right. Hopefully you found the measure of arc BC to be 180 degrees, double the inscribed angle, and then hopefully you found the measure of angle BAC is equal to 80 degrees, half of the intercepted arc. So you need to be careful. Depending on what information you're given, you're either going to need to multiply the angle times 2 to get the arc, or divide the arc by 2 to get the measure of the angle. So make sure you know that clearly. This next one uses the same ideas that we talked about, and we need to find the measures of the arcs or the angles in circle M. So this first one, it asks us to find the measure of angle QMP. That's QMP. So because it seems like we're kind of missing a segment right there, I'm just going to draw that in from Q to M so that we know exactly what we're talking about. So here, we're looking for the measure of angle QMP. That's this angle. 
there are a couple different ways that we can solve for the measure of angle QMP, and I'm going to show you one of them. Last time we talked about how QMP, every central angle, is going to be equal to the measure of the arc. Now, if we knew the measure of arc QP, that would make this a lot easier for us, but we don't. So, what we're going to do is use the information we have. Here we have this diameter NP. That tells us that from P to N is going to be 180 degrees. If we know that QN is 120, that means if we take 180 and subtract the 120, we're left with 60 degrees for QP. Now if we know that QP is 60 degrees, that means angle QMP is also going to be 60 degrees. <coughs> Next, it asks us to find the measure of angle PNO. So here's angle PNO. Now, this has vertex on the circle, so that means this angle measurement is going to be half of the intercepted arc. The intercepted arc is 70, so half of 70 is going to be 35 degrees for the measure of PNO. Next, we want to find the measure of arc QO, so that means from Q all the way to O. And remember, we're talking about the minor arc QO and not Q all the way around to O this way because that would be a major arc and it would need to tell us QNO. Okay? So make sure you're talking about the correct arc. So from Q to O, we just have this 60 degree arc and this 70 degree arc, so we can use arc addition postulate to say that this is going to be 130 degrees. And then the measure of arc PQ. So here's PQ, which we actually found earlier when we were looking for the measure of angle QMP. So this arc is going to be 60 degrees. Now I want you to pause, take a minute to try to find the answer to these four, and then check back with me and see if you got it right. Hopefully you found the measure of angle NMO is 110 because we have to draw in another segment, but NMO, this is a central angle which is exactly the same as the intercepted arc. And since NOP is 180, when we subtract that 70, we're left with this red arc that's 110 degrees. Angle QNP, we have QNP, so that's this inscribed angle with an intercepted arc of 60 degrees. So because it's an inscribed angle, it's going to be half of the intercepted arc. So half of 60 gives us 30. Arc NOP, N to O to P, this has endpoints of a diameter, and it's half the circle. So that's going to be half of 360, which is 180. Arc OQN, we start at O, we go all the way to Q, and then we finish at N. So that's almost the entire circle, except for this arc. So you can find that by taking 360 minus 110 to give you 250 degrees. Here's another corollary based off of the inscribed angles theorem. And it says that a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. So that word inscribed again means that we have this quadrilateral with vertices on the circle. And so this can only happen if the opposite angles are supplementary. So A and C add up to 180, and then B and D add up to 180. So here in these diagrams, we need to decide whether a circle can be circumscribed about the quadrilateral. So we just finished our unit on quadrilaterals, and so we should be able to take what we know from that unit and answer these questions carefully. So here we have this quadrilateral, we're given three angles and we're missing the fourth. So let's find the fourth one first. We need to take all the angles, 130, 92, 70, and that missing angle, and if we add them up, they have to equal 360. So when we solve for that missing angle, we get 292 plus x is equal to 360. And then you subtract 292 from both sides. So we get x is equal to 68. So this unknown angle is 68 degrees. Now, what we want to check to see is if the opposite angles are supplementary. So 68 plus 92 gives us 160. 
and then these opposite angles, 130 plus 70 gives us 200. 160 and 200, neither of these are supplementary, so our answer here is no. You cannot circumscribe a circle around this quadrilateral. This next one is a kite. Now remember kites. The sides, the angles that are in between the non-congruent sides, one and two, so that's this angle, one and two, so this angle, these two are congruent. So again, all the angles have to add up to 360. So if we take 130 plus 50, that gives us a total of 180. And then if we take 360 and subtract 180, we're left with 180. That has to be evenly split between these two. So 180 divided by 2 gives us 90. So this is actually 90 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. So when we check to see if the opposite angles are supplementary, 90 plus 90 is 180. And then we actually already did this check of 130 plus 50 here to see that it's 180. So the answer here is yes, and you can actually circumscribe a circle around that quadrilateral, the kite. So I want you to pause, find the missing angles of this isosceles trapezoid, and then answer whether a circle can be circumscribed about the isosceles trapezoid. Then check back with me. So hopefully you found the angles to be 60 degrees and then these two to be 120 using your properties of isosceles trapezoids. And the answer would be yes, the opposite angles are supplementary, so we can circumscribe a circle around that trapezoid. This theorem says that if a tangent and a chord intersect at a point on the circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So I want you to treat this like an inscribed angle. Angle DAB has vertex on the circle, so the measure of the angle is going to be half of the intercepted arc. Let's work out a couple examples. Here we need to find the measure of the indicated arc or angle. So we're given the measure of this arc is 172 degrees, and we actually need to find the measure of this angle. So remember, I said treat this like an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the circle, so the measure of the angle is going to be half of the intercepted arc. So it's 172 divided by 2 to give us an angle measure of 86 degrees. This one, it's the same idea. We have this arc, but this time we need to find this angle measure on this side. These are not the corresponding arcs and angles, so we actually need to do this in two steps. The, so the first step would be to find the measure of this arc, which is the rest of the circle. So the entire circle is 360. We want to subtract the 128 that we already have, and then we're left with 232. So this arc is 232, and then we want half of that. So we divide that by 2 to give us a total of 116 degrees for this angle. This next problem is similar to the one we just did where we're given the measure of this angle and then a different non-corresponding arc. So I'm going to solve this one differently than that and I'm going to use this line instead of using the entire circle. So we know that every line is 180 degrees and this angle is 96. So when you take 180 and you subtract 96, you're left with 84. That means this angle over here is 84 degrees. Now with that angle, we can find its corresponding arc by taking 84 and multiplying that by 2, which gives us a total of 168 degrees for x. Now I want you to pause, find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of the arc for x, and then check back with me. Hopefully you found the measure of angle 1 to be 63 degrees and the measure of arc x to be 152 degrees. If you didn't, check your work with mine and see where you might have made a mistake. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you in class for more practice on inscribed angles.